Hi, I'm Mahmoud, and today I want to show you how to make a metal bass tone using only stock plugins. Alright, so this is a very spontaneous video. I wasn't planning on doing this until this afternoon. And the reason is I was browsing Reddit and this kid on, met on the subreddit Metal Musicians was asking on how to achieve a metal bass tone. Um, I think he was going for a more doomy, sludgy kind of sound. Either way, this applies to any metal genre. The only difference is you change the kind of drive that you want to make it fit within the genre that you're going for. So, let's dive in. I'm going to show you a really quick way. I did this tone in like five minutes, only using stock plugins within Cubase. So, if you have a DAW that is similar, you're going to be able to do this very easily. Let's go. All right. Let's get to it. We're in Cubase, and here's what we're going to do. This is the bass DI. Um, I'm going to leave this track here for comparison later so you can hear where we're going from and what we're going to end up with. Um, and I'm going to duplicate it twice. Like, well, once if you're doing this for real. The third time is just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, duplicate it and... Here's the first step, the bass low end. You're going to split up the low end and the high end onto two different tracks. That way you have control over how much low end or how much grind you have in your tone. You can do this even if you're monitoring your tone life. You just um, input the track on, well, input your bass guitar onto both these tracks and monitor live on both of them. And that way you should be able to hear the tone coming through both tracks easily. Now, the bass track first. First thing I'm gonna do is cut out the high end. Let's listen to the bass track as it is right now. I used a VST program that is called Punk Bass. Basically, it's a P bass simulation, and I chose that one because a lot of people have a P bass. Um, and it sounds good. So, let's cut out the high end. That's the first step. I've cut everything above 323 hertz. Um, fairly radical cut. It's the first move. Second move, compress it. I used a 41 attack, um, medium, uh, sorry, 41 ratio, ratio, medium ish attack, and a kind of slow release. Well, medium release, maybe. Uh, well, it's at 430 milliseconds. Um, and here's how this sounds. The goal of this is to pin the low end and keep it in place and make it very, very even. By splitting the high end and low end, you can pin the low end and keep some dynamic in the high end. Moving on, let's go to the bass grind channel. First move, we're going to do the opposite thing. We're going to cut out the low end at the same frequency that we cut the high end on the other track. It's basically going to be a mirror image. Here it is. And to keep it simple, I just copied the same compressor over just to compress the high end a little bit. Notice that the compressor is reacting a lot less um, that is because a lot of the energy from the bass guitar comes from the low end. So by removing the low end, 
you're going to have a lot less compression, which is all right. We're not looking to compress this thing to death. We're just here to tame a little bit of the attack. Moving on. I'm just going to keep this very easy and dirty for you guys. I hope this works for you. Um, next step is getting a drive section. This can be any overdrive you like. Um, if you're playing... Uh, super sludgy metal, maybe get a fuzz. If you're playing more thrashy kind, maybe back off the drive a little bit. Not too much, though. You still want to keep some grind. Um, depending on how much grind you get in there and how much distortion overall is going to determine what genre it's going to fit in. Um, if you're going to go for something sludgy and um, kind of gross sounding in the best way possible, then just go crazy. Anywho, here's how this sounds. Sounds terrible like that because I turned off the cabinet simulation. I'm going to explain to you later why. Next move is a EQ, which is this. What I did is tame the low mids over here, push the high mids quite a bit, and cut off um, everything above 7.5k. Um, this stuff over here is all fizzly and gross and nasty, and you don't want that in a bass tone. It's useless information, just takes up unnecessary space in any mix, any song. You don't need that, just cut it out. You could even go more extreme if you want. Um, let me turn that on and off just so you can hear what that sounds like. It's just way nicer sounding, but we're still not done yet. What we're going to do is combine both of these tones and send them to a bus. The space bus is where we're going to do additional processing to both of these together. First things first, an EQ again. Let's turn it on, and I'll turn on the individual bands by themselves. I rolled off a little bit of low end at 40 hertz. Boosted some 65, 66 hertz just to give it a bit more thump. I cut out some more of the tubbiness in the low mid. Um, a lot of the information that sounds boxy and not so nice in a bass lives in the low mid. And final step is just pushing some more highs and making it more aggressive. Next step, you'll notice we still don't have a bass cabinet, which is what we're going to do now. The reason I didn't put it on the bass grind is because I wanted to combine the bass low end and the bass high end together in the same cabinet, which makes it sound like it's still one bass, which is pretty cool. I just picked the cabinet that was stock here with Cubase, and I just played around with the microphones a little bit. I ended up choosing this one and blending it a bit to the Royer side instead of the 57, which sounded all right to me. Here's how this sounds. At this point, um, you'll notice it sounds like a bass. This is what you want it to sound like. Um, this could totally work um, in any situation. Again, just change up the grind, change up whatever distortion you have, and you'll be able to fit in any other genre that you want. The principle applies. At this point, you could call it a day, but um, I got a bit finicky and... Um, some of the frequencies that were in the bass started to annoy me. I don't know if it's because of the cabinet that isn't the greatest or not. 
These are stock plugins anyway, but I decided to do some additional surgical EQ. Here's how this sounds like. These are maybe subtle moves to you, but I find them um, quite important. Um, if I show you these two bands and what I did with them, um, you'll notice the ugly, ugly tones that are hidden in the bass tone. Let's listen to them. I'll just boost these two and you'll see what I mean. And that is practically it. Um, at the end of the chain, I put a limiter, which is basically a very, very hard compressor, just to keep everything in check and not make it go too crazy. This has been on all the time, so. It's just slight compression, maximum of 3 dB of compression. It's just there to keep everything in check. And there you go. That's the bass tone that I created within a few minutes. You can do that as well. It's very easy as you just saw. Don't make it too complicated. Don't let people tell you it's hard. Yes, mixing is hard, but if you're going to go and play music, you don't need to be a master. You just need to get a basic tone and go rock. Let's compare this to the original bass tone that we had. Let's say, maybe I'm missing bass right now. I could just boost this here and I'll get some more bass. Let's listen to that. Or maybe it's too aggressive for me. I'll pull this down a little. You get the point. You're very flexible this way. It's pretty cool. Just last little thing. Let's listen to the bass tone together with some drums. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. If you want more videos like this one, um, let me know what kind of video you wanna see. Um, this is supposed to be a really quick tutorial. This is by no means a tone that might, like it could work in a mix, obviously, but this was not the goal. This is just to get you inspired and rolling and playing and making music, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. So, um, I hope this inspires you. I hope you get to play music without spending more money than you need to. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.